Recently, a viewer asked me what should have been a simple question. How can you model a wire wrapped around a torus? Well, that turned out to be a lot more complicated than I expected. It's kind of a long story that may or may not be interesting to you, so I'll hold the back story unless there's a demand to hear it. The only decent solution I came up with was coding a new parametric tool to create a helix following a path. First, I'll show you the tool in action, then I'll show you how to install it into your FreeCAD. I'll start out as usual in the part workbench. As you can see, I have a new button in my toolbar for the Path Helix tool. If I'm going to do a wire wrap torus, the first thing I need is a torus. Fortunately, that's one of the primitives we have. Just take the defaults, a torus with a major diameter of 10 millimeters and a minor diameter of 2 millimeters. As the name Path Helix implies, we need a path to build the helix on. So create a new sketch on the XY plane and draw an arc. I want it to be 270 degrees. Set the endpoints on a horizontal constraint so it'll be an even wire wrap. Set the radius to torus.radius1 so that the helical wire will follow the torus. Close the sketch. Now select the arc and the path helix tool. And there it is. A nice helix wrapped around the path. It doesn't have any kind of setup GUI to set parameters yet. Just create the helix and then select it and change anything you need to in the data pane. Currently it defaults to a radius of 3 mm, a pitch of 1, and a count computed to completely cover the path selected. Notably, the data pane exposes both the count and the pitch. Changing one will recompute the other. You can treat either as the dependent variable depending on your need. Path Helix is a parametric tool, so I can change the count to 40, and as you can see, the pitch has been adjusted accordingly. I'm going to wrap this helix with either a thick wire or a thin pipe, just to make things a little easier to see. The wrap will be 0.25 millimeters in radius, so I'll set the radius of the Path Helix to torus.radius2 plus 0.25 millimeters. The helix is quite nice, but since it's composed of a series of 180 degree arcs, it would be a pain to use it to specify a sweep path. So select the path helix and the join curve tool from the curves workbench to give us an easy to use sweep path. Fortunately, the join curve is also parametric, so we can make adjustments if we need them later. We have a path, now we need a profile. Create a sketch on the XY plane and put a circle at the origin. Set the radius to 0.25 mm. Close the sketch and in the data pane, edit its attachment. Since it has no existing attachment, the attachment editor comes up waiting for me to select something. Select the join curve and make the attachment mode Frenet NB. That is Frenet normal to both. It's a little hard to see, but there is our profile attached to the join curve. Now press Sweep. Double click the profile sketch to move it into the selected profiles. Click on Sweep Path, select the join curve, and press Done. Check the box to create a solid. Hit OK. And there it is. Honestly, I'm a little surprised no such tool already existed but I searched high and low on the internet and found nothing. Just for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to set the color of the torus to kind of a ferrite gray, and I'll set the color of the wrap to something like enameled wire. I should note that just to help get things in place, if the ends of the helix don't come out where you would like them, you can set extra half to true to give it an extra half turn. You can set rotation to change the starting point and sew the ending point of the helix around just a little bit to make it end where you need it. Finally, there's a boolean called reverse. 
Chicago Bat to choose between a right-handed and a left-handed helix. Like many tools in the part workbench, you can also change the spine parameter. It can be set to anything usable as a path that you want the helix to be wrapped around. Now, to install the tool in FreeCAD. The usability of the path helix is so much improved by the join curve from the curves workbench that I don't recommend anybody use it without installing curves first. To do that, go to Tools, Add-on Manager. It may take a moment to load data the first time you run it. If it's not already defaulted there, set it to Show Add-ons Containing Workbenches, Status Any. In the search box, you can type Curves and you should find the workbench. Select the Curves Workbench. Give it a moment to load and then click Install in the upper right hand corner. Soon it will tell you Curves was installed successfully. We can close the manager now. Tell it to restart later because we don't really want it to restart just yet. At this point, installation is not quite as automatic as I might like it to be, but it's also not terribly difficult. The first step is to find the user's macro directory. Go to Macro, Macros. The user-specific macro directory will be at the bottom of the dialog. From here out, the instructions I give will work as is in Mac or Linux. My apologies to the Windows users. I simply do not have a proper test environment for that. In the video, I'll demonstrate on Linux. On Mac, you'll get a different path name to use, but the installation will work just the same. Now open a terminal and change directory to the user macros directory. Take your browser over to my GitHub repository, github.com slash pyro9 slash pathhelix. You have two choices here. You can either clone the Git repository directly into the user macros directory, or you can download the sources as a zip file. If you choose that, put the zip file in the user macros directory. Now unzip the zip file. This creates a directory that will look something like pathhelix-master. In order to work, this directory must be named only pathhelix. But that's simple enough to rename. Of course, if you are cloning the repo with git, the directory will already be pathhelix. Either way, go into the pathhelix directory and run the linux-mac install.sh script. All the script does is create an icon directory within the FreeCAD local user configurations, hard link pathhelix.svg into that directory, and then hard link the dopathhelix.f macro file directly under the macros directory. For now in Windows, you'll need to do that manually. Note that the links must be hard links or copies. Do not do a soft link. FreeCAD will not follow those. If someone would like to come up with a script to do this for Windows, I would sure appreciate it and I'll gladly include it into the repo. To make this take effect, exit FreeCAD and restart it. If you look in the macro, macros again, you'll see now that there's a DoPath Helix macro. This lets us know it's been successful. It is possible to use the tool by selecting the curve you want to use as a spine and just running this macro. But to really integrate it, we want it to be a button in a toolbar. Go to Tools, Customize. In the dialog box that pops up, go to the Macros tab. If DoPath Helix is the only macro you have, it will come up as the default. Otherwise, use the Macro drop-down selector and select DoPath Helix. Set the menu text to Path Helix. Press the button next to PixMap. You may already find the Path Helix icon in there. If not, click on the icon folders, click the plus, and navigate to the user configuration folders. Depending on your defaults, you may need to tell it to show you hidden files and directories in order to get to it. Select the icons directory that was created in the previous step and OK that. Now you should see the path helix icon in the display. Select it and OK. 
Now click Add. This has made the DoPath Helix macro available as a tool button. Now we have to add it to a toolbar so we can actually see it. Go to the Toolbars tab, and over the right hand box make sure Part is selected as the target. If you don't already have a toolbar you'd like to put the Path Helix tool in, click New and pick a name for your toolbar. You can even just leave it as the default. Now on the left hand side of the dialog select Macros, select Path Helix and click the arrow to move it over into the custom toolbar. Now press OK. You may need to switch to another workspace and back to into part in order to make it all take effect. You can see we now have our toolbar and our Path Helix icon over on the right hand side. As long as we're here, you might want to add other tools like New Sketch and the Join Curves tool from the Curves Workbench to the new toolbar. One thing to note here, if a workbench has not yet been loaded, you will not be able to find the tools within that workbench in the dialog in order to load them into the toolbar. Further, even once you have, in the future those tools will not appear in the toolbar until the workbench has been loaded. There is a solution to this. Go to View, Preferences, and select Workbenches. Simply check the auto load box next to any workbenches you want to include in the toolbar. If that workbench isn't loaded yet, click the Load button to load it now so that you can configure the toolbar. To make things a little bit more accessible, you may want to move the existing toolbars around a little bit. So the custom toolbar isn't jammed all the way over to the right hand side and half obscured. Now just a quick test that shows everything is working fine. Another note here. Currently it's normal that the report view fills up with all kinds of debugging information when you use the Path Helix tool. I'll be turning that off as the tool reaches its final form, but for now it's been quite useful for fixing bugs. Just for fun, here's three path helices wound together 120 degrees apart. This is the power of free software in action. If it doesn't do what you want it to do, you can make it happen yourself. Or perhaps you can talk someone else into making it happen. You can even pay somebody else to make it happen. If you'd like to know more about custom tools or about how the helix is drawn, let me know. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.